If you've been watching the recent videos, you'll know I've been telling my life story from when I was a kid through to now and looking at the various different things that helped to guide me on the path that I've taken. Today we're going to look at the next part of the story, taking you through how I turned my passion into a career. I'm inside today. Usually I like to do these things outside, but it's mad windy out and I think it would make the audio quality bad. So figured let's just keep it inside today. We'll get back out again soon. I'm going to backtrack a little bit at the start of this video just to recover a few of the things that we finished off with last time, which will help feed into this next stage quite nicely. After finishing uni, I moved to Bakewell in the middle of the Peak District and I was working in a design agency. All my free time I spent outdoors, cycling, walking, shooting, taking photos, and I was posting on Instagram a lot. I started posting daily and was seeing real growth and progression in my following likes and ability to take photos. This was back in the days before algorithms, stories, reels, all these various different things that have made Instagram what it is today. Back then it was just post a photo and people see it. You can use hashtags to try and increase your engagement, but it was pretty simple. And I worked really hard at following a strategy of posting daily, using relevant hashtags and using it to build my profile up. Whilst I loved living in Bakewell and having the Peak District and areas to explore on my doorstep, I was quite limited by travel. I couldn't drive, so my plans were relatively limited with where I could go to on my own. I relied quite heavily on going away on trips with friends a couple of times a year to get the bulk of my content that I would then support with local shops in the Peak District. I'd started forming more ambitious plans for my photos and I wanted to visit and travel to more places. That previous summer, I'd been to the Isle of Skye and really experienced what's out there. And I was becoming more and more aware through Instagram as a platform of all the various places in the world that I wanted to travel to. So I knew that I needed to change something to enable me to be able to travel as much as I physically could. I'd caught the travel bug hard and I really wanted to pursue my desire to travel and explore as much as I could do. So in October of 2016, I handed in my resignation notice at the graphic design agency I'd been working at for the last few years. I really enjoyed my work there, just like I enjoyed my lifestyle in Bakewell, but I knew that I wanted to try and broaden my horizons further, and this was the best step for me to take. There was a gamble that it might not play out exactly as I wanted to, and that by moving out of the Peak District, I wouldn't have the ability to go out and explore every day like I could do then. But I really wanted to try and travel more, and I saw this as the best way of making that happen. I moved back home to Leicestershire, in with my parents, and luckily managed to find myself another job in graphic design working nearby. This came with a bit of a salary raise and then because I was living with my parents and not paying for a very expensive little cottage in Derbyshire, I had much more expendable money. So the first thing I did was upgrade my camera. For years I've been shooting on the Canon 400D that I got when I was around 16. So it had been maybe eight years of a single camera. I upgraded to a Sony A7 Mark I and whilst cameras don't mean everything, this made a big difference to my work. Shooting on a full frame sensor and the quality of the images that this Sony was putting out really helped to transform my images. Everything seemed sharper, the colors, the dynamic range just worked better than that 10 year old Canon did do. Secondly, it's important to enjoy your gear. So whilst cameras don't dictate how good a photo you can take, they can definitely inspire you to shoot more. We've all been there and experienced it where you get yourself a new lens or a new laptop, or maybe a new bike and it really motivates you to put more effort into it as you're wanting to use that new product. So as well as the camera, I also got myself a car pretty much straight away. An old Ford Fiesta wasn't particularly great, but it was exactly what I needed at the time to get moving. I started spending a lot of my free time driving around with friends and parents with the goal of passing my test as soon as I could do. Over those first few months after moving home, I didn't really shoot too much. I was back in Leicester, enjoying seeing friends, settling into a new job, and really working on driving. So I was really falling back on all the old images I'd taken before. I was still working through a lot of the photos I'd taken whilst I was in the Peak District and on trips away to Scotland and the lakes, but I really wasn't doing much exploring myself. And whilst that was difficult for me not to be out exploring and shooting, I also noticed it affected my engagement and my performance as well. I was starting to realize that you have to be doing things and being exciting to keep up engagement and keep everything rolling along. I did make one trip away during that time. I went to Glencoe just before Christmas and whilst it wasn't snowy like I wanted to, I had a couple of products I was shooting which were really exciting to me at the time. They were unpaid jobs but at the time I didn't really matter because I really wanted to broaden my experience, get more portfolio work 
and also it was exciting to be shooting with big brands. In February of 2017, I passed my driving test and that was a huge part in enabling me to travel further and do as much as I want. Almost immediately, I started going away regularly. Going away at weekends to the Peak District, Wales, the Lake District, and sleeping in the car, camping at the side of the road, really using my new travel abilities to get out and shoot and do as much as I could do. When I lived in the Peaks, I'd been on a few Instagram meetups and I kept my eye out for more of these around the country as my travel options opened up. I spotted a few of these around and ended up going to one in the Lake District in, I think it was March of 2017. I stayed in the house with a few people and we spent three days exploring the Lake District, shooting, talking and making friends. I went to a few of these and started recognising faces, getting to know people and became friends with a lot of them. Some of who I'm still really tight with today and I think this really helped me to broaden my travel options. Suddenly I had a network of photographers and people around the country that wanted to go out and shoot every weekend. Whatever I wanted to do I could message someone and say like, do you fancy going to the lake this weekend and usually that the people would say yes. So this was really fundamental in giving me access to other people to do stuff with and help spur on that energy and movement. Everything was advancing well, my photography skills were improving and improving and improving. I was loving getting to grips with a new camera and experiencing as much as I could do now that I could drive. That summer I went on another big road trip to Scotland with two friends from home. In a similar fashion to the year before, we drove through Glencoe, hitting up Sky, and then we headed up the West Highlands, doing a few things in Torridon, and exploring a bit more of Scotland. Not only did we have an amazing time, but this also added to the passion I felt for Scotland, and I was really starting to find a connection there with it for me. I loved the raw beauty and wild feel I got when I was there, and the possibilities of adventure, photography, and experiences seemed endless. Whilst my Instagram growth had slowed a little when I first came home and wasn't travelling and shooting as much, it really stepped up again when I started driving and making more of these trips. It cemented to me this idea that the more exciting my life is feeling and the more I'm doing, the more my Instagram starts to perform alongside that. And the amount of effort and energy I'm putting in always seemed to trend towards a good feedback and response from the platform itself. This kept building and by the end of the summer I was reaching around 15,000 followers which seemed to open up a door to more opportunities and experiences. The first of these big opportunities I had was shooting an outdoor climbing project with Mamu. It was based in Scotland and I took a couple of days off work, driving all the way from the Midlands to the Cairngorms in a single stint, staying overnight and then spending the day shooting the project. I was really pleased to be not only working on a paid brief with a good client, but also to be getting back to Scotland because I'd only been a couple of times and I was really falling in love with the place. After the shoot had finished, I used my time as best I could do by not sleeping very much and driving through the night to get to Glenfinnan to shoot the train going across the viaduct and then spent the next day and a half shooting Glencoe and the surrounding areas before driving back to Leicester. The second opportunity came a few weeks after that where I was invited by Audi to go out to Spain and drive some of their new SUV vehicles. It was a really quick trip. I think we were only actually out of the UK for maybe like 30 hours, but it was an amazing experience. And I was starting to realize that these experiences and work opportunities are actually out there. I just need to find a way of connecting myself to them and getting onto more of them. I knew that both of these experiences had come through my Instagram where the client or contact had found me and contacted me to go on the project. So I knew my Instagram account was an important cog in this big machine that was driving me forward. I wanted to focus more effort on it and part of that was gonna be traveling and doing as much as I could do. It was around this time that I started to think about the idea of getting a van. After spending so many nights in the car, sleeping in the passenger seat or pitching a tent by the side of the road, I thought the idea of having a van with a bed permanently set up would be the ideal solution. It would simplify and enable so many travel opportunities where you could just get away without any extra hassle and really help me to maximise all the free time I had. I was speaking to a friend and he actually had an old van for sale, a Toyota Hiace, and we agreed a price and I bought it. Thankfully just in time because my Fiesta exploded on a drive to the Peak District for a sunrise mission just a couple of weeks later. So from that point on, I was driving the van full time. I built a small little makeshift bed in the back and whilst there wasn't room for any lounging or sitting or really cooking, it was a perfect set for me. 
I'd have to cook outside on a camp stove and there wasn't really anywhere to sit and work, but I loved it and it worked really well for me. I started getting out more in the van, sleeping overnight and getting up early to do sunrises and just really embracing the whole aspect of travel. I'd caught the travel bug and I kept teasing it with these trips away, but I knew I really wanted to do another big trip that was gonna really open my eyes. And that trip was Iceland. After a lot of planning and preparation, finally was gonna go to Iceland with three friends from home in November of 2017. We hired a camper van and spent 10 days driving around Route 1 and experiencing and visiting all the places that I'd studied photos of for months and years. All those famous landmarks I was suddenly there in front of taking my own images and being mind blown at the beauty of the place. Iceland's vast and diverse landscape really impacted me and I found myself leaving Iceland feeling even more inspired but already burning to get back. I knew it would be a place that I would return to again and again and again. I came home from that first trip to Iceland and got some serious post-travel blues and it got me down for a few days. It was one of those trips where even after you're back, your mind is still there. You're still thinking about it and still wishing you were there. And going back through the images, developing my skills, posting photos was a really nice way of continuing that feeling onwards, the continuation of the experience of the trip itself. It was all building this energy where I wanted to put more and more of my time and effort into photography. Everything was starting to come together really well. I was having amazing experiences traveling. I was taking photos that made me proud and happy. I was making great friends within the industry and as well as getting work opportunities and just experiences that were really helping to make me feel excited and fulfilled. At 27 turned to 2018, my followers ticked over to 20,000 followers and I moved out of my parents' house and in with a friend still in Leicestershire. I was still going away as much as I could in the van and was really starting to develop my passion and desire to do photography further. It was slowly ramping up with each trip and with each photo. In March of 2018, I went back to Iceland again, this time with three other photographers, and we had one of the most hectic trips I've ever had. From sunrise through to sunset, we were driving around, shooting, being active, trying to get as much done as possible. And then every night the Aurora came out and we got next to no sleep. Whilst we were out all night just shooting and loving our full experience. There was something about the relentless pace and the amount we got done during this trip that really connected with me. I loved the busyness of it and the fact that we weren't wasting any time or any opportunities. Our entire day, entire trip was just focused on taking photos and having experiences. We'd get very little sleep at our accommodations and would usually top this up by sleeping in the car as we were driving between places. We'd also eat from gas stations or supermarkets and everything was just really pushed on taking photos. It was around this time and in the weeks after this second Iceland trip that I really started thinking about the possibility of making photography into a career and started thinking about how I could make that happen. Most of my experiences had come through Instagram and all the work opportunities and various different contacts I was making were all through the platform. I knew that my growth, my exposure and the amount of followers I had was going to have a direct impact on that ability to get more of these opportunities and make connections within industry. I'd learned as well that the more I was doing, the more trips I was going on, the more interesting my stories and my photos were, the more my Instagram grew and got more attention. There was a direct correlation between me doing more and putting more effort in and getting more out. So my plan was to spend the next period of my life working as hard as I could on photography, trying to do as much as possible and just put everything I had into it. I assessed my life and looked at the various ways I could help to fund and do more. This meant I altered my spending habits. I cut out all unnecessary purchases. I stopped going to the pub as much. My food cut down to very basic and cheap meals all so that I could go away more at the weekends. And I'd keep this same mentality when I was away. So if I was with people and they were eating in a pub or in a restaurant, I would often go to the van and just cook pasta on my own. Just because I thought that if I can keep every trip as cheap as possible, I can do more trips. And that was my main objective at this point was to do as much as I physically could do. Every single weekend I went away. I'd get out of work Friday at 5.30 and usually drive all evening to get to the Lake District or Wales and then sleep in the van Friday and Saturday night, spend the whole time shooting, 
before driving back Sunday afternoon for work on the Monday. In the week, I'd get home from work and spend the whole evening editing photos, working on my website and planning future trips. I started making friends and getting to know other people that wanted this same hard, intense level of travel and photography. And with them, I started doing more and more ambitious trips. We started driving to Europe for the weekend. So we'd leave work on the Friday, drive down to the South Coast and get the Channel Tunnel and then drive all the way through the night to hopefully get to a destination for sunrise. We did this and went to Germany a few times as well as France. And now on other trips, we'd also fly and we'd spend the weekend exploring the Dolomites or Bavaria, trying to squeeze as much as possible out of all of that free time. And it was a really exciting period of my life where you'd be at work in the week, but you knew that that weekend you were going to Germany for like two days and you weren't going to sleep much at all, but you were going to have an amazing experience and achieve so much more than you really thought was possible. And the Instagram engagement and growth followed this trend. One trip in particular does stand out though as having a very big impact upon my photography journey. We had this one trip, we went to France. We did the usual leave work on a Friday, drive to the Channel Tunnel, get off the other side, drive all the way through the night, and we got to Etretat in northern France for sunrise, where we had a great shoot before getting back in the car, sleeping for a little bit, and then driving to the main location for this trip, which was Mont Saint-Michel. Now this is a place that is quite a big tourist spot already, but back in 2018, it wasn't really seen on Instagram that much. And I felt that we had this opportunity to really discover somewhere new, and post somewhere that hadn't really been seen before. We looked out with the conditions hard and got some of the most incredible photos I think I've ever taken. These photos blew up on Instagram and they're still by far my most liked photos. There was a stage when you could go on your tagged photos and scroll down and it was just that photo again and again and again and again. And over this period, my growth went through the roof. I hit 30K and then before I knew it, it was 40K and then 45K and this growth was ridiculous. I followed this up by just keeping that same intensity throughout the whole summer and then realized that I was having a very good run at making this into a career. It was in the summer when I decided to really give this a go. I knew that if I was to never give it a chance, I would probably regret that for the rest of my life. And that having a good go and failing wouldn't be anywhere near as bad as never knowing what could have been. So I knew I had to give freelance photography and a career in photography a go. The tenancy agreement for the house I was living in expired in December, about six months later on. And I told myself that if I was still working by that point, I would hand in my resignation notice, move back to my parents' house to minimize costs, and just try to do photography. As it happened, I didn't actually have to wait that long. I was still working hard, putting as much effort as I could do into my trips, my editing, making contacts, building a portfolio, and on the side, I was starting to put away extra little bits of money to help me in the event of going freelance, but I was still trying to get away as much as possible and say yes to every opportunity. Two projects came along that really helped to boost me and accelerate this process. The first of these was a job working for a stock image company where I had to go away for the weekend to Glencoe. I'm never going to say no to a trip to Scotland and spend a few days shooting with models, products, props, clothing, just to build a really nice big library of stock images for this company that was launching soon. As well as this, I then had a job with a American tourism company and they wanted me to travel all over the UK photographing the major tourist spots. This meant a three or four week trip. And by this point, I'd already exhausted most of the holiday from my job. So I was running out of options of how to make this happen. Between these two jobs, I was set to make about seven or eight grand. And I realized that this was enough to get me started in freelance. Moving back into my parents' house and minimizing all my costs meant that I could stretch this money out and make it last if I had to, if I was struggling to find more work and not getting much income coming in. So I went for it and handed in my resignation notice. And on the 5th of October, 2018, I walked out of the office in the nine to five for the last time. To find out what happens next, you're gonna have to wait and tune in next week when I will try to bring you from this point up to where I am today. 
I really did think that this would be a two-part or three-part video series, but the more I dive into it, the more I realise that it's actually quite a complex story with a couple of different clear chapters. I think this is a natural break here, right as I'm turning from working full-time into going full-time freelance. So next week I'm going to dive into that and see how I found my feet and kept that going over the next couple of years. If you want to make sure you don't miss next week's video, hit the subscribe button. Likes and comments are always appreciated and I will catch you all next week.